Okay. Uh, next talk is zero knowledge arguments for ready space PRFs and applications to eCache by Ben Oliver, Sandin, Koa Ben, Crossing One, and Koa will give a talk. Okay, uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, this is a uh, work with uh, Ben Oliver, uh, Sandin, and Hassan One. Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, our construction of zero knowledge, uh, supporting zero knowledge protocols for. PIFs from large assumptions and how to use them to construct ECAS systems. Okay, so this is after uh, the talk. So first I will discuss uh, the application of uh, zero knowledge for PIFs in privacy preserving protocols and uh, discuss the problem in the context of LADIS. Okay, then I will uh, state our results, discuss our techniques and uh, application uh, before concluding the talk. Okay, so uh, Pseudo random functions of PIF are deterministic functions that look like a truly random one. A PIF with a key space k, domain d, and range r is a function fk that maps d to r, such that for a uniformly random uh, key k and for any input j, the value fk of j uh, should be computationally close to uniform outer range. Okay, so PIF is a fundamental notion and has applications everywhere in cryptography. So in this talk, uh, this works actually we focus only on uh, application of PIF in uh, privacy preserving protocol that uh, um, emphasize on anonymity. Okay, so many such protocols require PIF with supporting zero knowledge proof that uh, output Y uh, is actually correctly computed. Okay, for some hidden uh, key, K, and uh, possibly hidden input J. So here hidden means it means uh, committed by it is certified in some way. So why we want that? Because um, we want to, to design some system where we can protect the anonymity of the users, but we can punish them if they abuse anonymity. So uh, such system should allow the user to deterministically generate a random looking value without uh, revealing any information about K and J, which, are, which may be related to his identity. But if the user there is twice, then anonymity is no longer preserved because the two uh, uh, sessions will be uh, linkable and there may be some uh, mechanism to, to detect this and to uh, reveal the identity of the user. Okay, so example of such systems like uh, uh, trace for ring signatures, anonymous surveys, and some anonymous authentications and the cache system. In the case of eCast in particular, so um, every time the user uh, spends a coin, especially he uh, he have to uh, generate a PIF value, um, which uh, for certified keys, so which is serial numbers. And if the user wants to spend this coin again, then basically uh, uh, the double uh, spending will be easily detected. Okay, so we observe that. Um, this kind of protocol has been realized uh, in uh, many number of theoretic uh, um, assumptions and led to various applications. But in uh, lab based crypto, uh, which is one of the most active topics in the last decade, so uh, the problem is still open. So this is more fair to, uh, to consider the design of such a building block in uh, the lab setting. Okay, so let me now give an, a short overview of non uh, zero knowledge proof for lattices. So um, existing zero knowledge proof for large regulations belong to two main classes. The first one is uh, snow light protocols, which was um, introduced by Lubasevsky with the rejection sampling technique. So this class of protocol is quite uh, efficient, um, but it has uh, a, pro a problem called sound effect by uh, Bible Mechon at uh, crypto last year. This means that the um, knowledge extractor in the protocol can only output a vector with norm larger than, than the, the norm that you can expect from a very witness. So uh, that may have some consequences, like uh, the protocol has to rely on stronger assumptions than, than, it, uh, than, uh, than it needed. Okay? Um, and in some sometimes uh, in some uh, advanced protocols, so basically we want the extractor to output binary uh, witness, 
And uh, in this case, I was uh, using the protocol is it? The first class seems to be uh, non-trivial. Okay, so um, the second class here, Stern-like protocol, would use uh, um, permutations, random permutation to prove the validity of witnesses. So this uh, protocol was originally proposed in the context of coding theory, um, but uh, was adapted to later adapted to the setting by Kawaji et al. as a grid cosine uh, a. And then it was um, um, extended by Linnet Arms with uh, a technique called recomposition and extension so that it can handle a relation related to uh, the LWE and SS problems. So uh, protocols in this class are less efficient uh, because each execution of the protocol has a um, constant sound error of two or three, but it is uh, more flexible. In the sense that um, in the sense that uh, we can easily com uh, combine many sub, uh, sub protocols uh, into one and it has no sound as lack. Okay, and uh, we can build uh, a, a lot of interesting stuff with, uh, with a combination of stand like protocols. Okay, so um, using the uh, uh, Z kind of uh, proof, so, uh, so we have managed to, to do something like uh, um, uh, proof for the hash function uh, and commitment and encryption sheet nature accumulator or branching program based on the, the six or the every um, uh, problem or their real version. First of all, we can prove that uh, we know knowledge of the uh, we have knowledge of the premise of the hash functions, uh, prove the knowledge of the valid opening of commitments, prove that the cybertech is um, well formed, prove that uh, we know the um, for, uh, we know what a very basic nature pair for standard models in nature, something like this. And even for proving that uh, we have a, um, a value that were correctly accumulated to a Merkle tree accumulators. And uh, as my colleague uh, uh, Fabrice Mohatan talked on uh, Monday, so standard protocol can even use uh, for proving like uh, um, the correct evaluation of branching programs or hidden branching programs. Okay, so um, the kind of protocol will lead to some uh, many uh, interesting applications like uh, fast submission natures, logarithmic cybering and group signatures, uh, building blocks for anonymous credentials, group encryptions, adaptive oblivious transfer with access control, and so on. Okay, so um, the common strategy for both of the, the class of protocols is, that, is to express the underlying relations as linear equation of the form a public matrix multiplied with a secret vector and equal a, pop, uh, equal a public vector modulus uh, some q. Okay, so uh, where the coefficients of the secret vector are small, uh, in case of standard -like protocols, may satisfy. Uh, some space or constraint also. Okay, so now let me go to uh, lattice space uh, PIF. So, um, ZPIFs are related to the learning query problem by uh, introduced by Bernadette Pankert and uh, Rosen in your grid trail. Uh, this is a deterministic version of LWE. So, um, first we have to uh, define what the routing function gives uh, for in these problems. So uh, let M be some integers, and Q and P are two moduli where Q is uh, larger than P. And we identify the Q at uh, Z from uh, 0 to Q minus 1, and similarly for the P. Now we define a routing function that maps uh, the Q to the M to the P to the M, where for X is map uh, a vector X, we map to uh, vector Y that is computed as follows. We multiply X by P of a Q, we write it down, and then reduce modulo P. Okay. So uh, uh, the uh, learning routing assumption says that uh, uh, the routing of uh, a matrix A transpose time vector S is pseudo random if a matrix A is uniformly random in the Q to the n time m, and that S is uniformly random in the Q to the n. Okay. So. Um, 
There are several words that show that uh, the, if the everyday assumption holds, then uh, everyday are also holds uh, for certain set, uh, parameter testing. Okay, and um, even that, uh, the assumption already directly use a uh, PHE um, that maps vector S to uh, to the um, the, the rounding of H S four times S. Okay, so if the PHE is uh, um, land doubling. Then we can uh, build a, a PIF via the famous GM construction. Uh, besides, this also led to uh, various other PIF, like uh, the one by Packard, uh, by by Banerjee, uh, Packard, and Rosen in the same paper, but they're based on the synthesizers, and uh, the one by sorry, by Bonnie et al. in crypto uh, thirteen by uh, Packard, uh, by Banerjee and Packard, and uh, in 14 and um, those being and scroll in 15 and so on. Okay, so now uh, let us uh, discuss the non triviality of, uh, of designing geometric proofs for large base PIF. So let us consider the PIF by Bonnet et al. So the function yields um, a public matrix, B, uh, two, two binary public matrix, P0 and B1, in uh, half dimension M times M a key k in the q to the m and it maps an input j uh, a binary input j of the l to uh, vector y in uh, the p to the m that computed as follows so uh, first we uh, we map the, the bits of j to the product of matrices p j l p j l minus one and so on to p j one and then multiply the product by k and then perform the routing function Okay, so we observe that proving knowledge of the secret uh, K and um, the secret uh, input J uh, using the node technique that I discussed is quite trivial because uh, recall that uh, the, the common strategy in, in, uh, for our technique is to, to reduce the relation to the form public matrix times uh, secret vector equal to uh, public vector model or something. But here actually the, the, the matrix uh, P J I are hidden. Uh, they're not copied at all. Uh, it's, um, it's hidden within the set P zero and P one. We don't know which. Okay. And the secret K uh, secret K is uh, also not small, and it's on, also possibly completed also. Moreover, uh, we don't even have uh, the modular linear equations, uh, and the, this equation, this rounding relation, seem not really compatible with uh, with what we know. Uh, Okay, so uh, so let me now state our results and our techniques. Okay, so um, we introduce general arguments for correct evaluation of that base DIF. Mainly that uh, we prove that f of f k of j equal to y, where the key k and input j are secret and possibly committed or certified by some first third party. And uh, the output y may be some given, uh, some given vector, or can be extended to the case where it is hidden and um, satisfy some additional uh, constraints. Specific specifically, uh, we have 10 protocols with communication costs, soft O of uh, lambda time L, where lambda is the security parameter and L is the uh, input plane of the PIF. For two PIF, okay, the first one is the uh, uh, the bonnet on uh, PIF or uh, PL, BLMR. Uh, this um, PIF has an additional property that, uh, that this is key homomorphic, but actually we, we don't need uh, this property in application. And using a similar technique, we can obtain uh, supporting you know, the proof for the generic PIF obtained from, from the everywhere based PRG via the TGM technology. Okay, so uh, to demonstrate the uh, um, usefulness of the Z protocol, so we give a, an application, which is the first compact gas system uh, from lab disease. So this can be considered as the um, an, a lab uh, analog of uh, the first compact gas by uh, uh, Kamelis, Hohenberger, uh, Elis, and Skaya in Euro 5. Okay, so I will uh, discuss the notion of uh, compact gas later. And in the process, we come up with a general sternlight uh, argument uh, 
for a very wide class of relations that may be of independent interest. Okay, so uh, let me discuss our techniques. Okay, so to handle the relation underlying the PIX, so basically we first have to to deal with the rounding relation. Okay, suppose that we want to prove that we know some uh, secret vector x that rounded to a given y. Okay, uh, where well, this x may be uh, may satisfy some other property. Okay, so what can we do? Um, so this relation, is, so uh, it's uh, naturally not linear, but. Uh, we observe that uh, one knows vector x in uh, um, 0 to q minus 1 to the n, uh, such that this routing function is correct if and only if one can compute uh, x and z with the same range such that p times x equal to q times y plus z modulo of p q. Okay, so basically here we uh, recover the, the vector z that was eliminated during the rubbing uh, operation. Okay, so this uh, simply simple ob observations uh, is actually quite useful in the sense that it transforms the rubbing relation to a modular linear relation with secret vector x and z, which are small relatively to uh, the model of p and q. Okay, so that is exactly the form that we are familiar with. Okay. So, we can apply notetic like uh, the decomposition and extension technique by later on. Okay, so for this, so um, we let m bar to be m times log q and hence be a matrix that allows to decompose vectors in uh, 0 to q minus 1 to the m into binary vector of length m bar. Okay, so now we have x equal to matrix hence times some, uh, the decomposed vector uh, Tindor x and uh, the same for z and uh, z tindo okay okay so now that is the decomposition step so now we have to we will do the extension step okay so the, the goal the one here okay so um we uh, we start with some uh, vector that is not small okay so uh, it's the it's not can be at, at big at uh, q minus one so now we already have, have binary vectors Okay, so we, we want to use some Stern-like techniques. So in this case, we have to, to do some manipulation on the x window and z window so that it, uh, it had like uh, the fixed number of uh, uh, fixed handling weight so that we can apply some formulation using Stern's technique. So for this, we define uh, the set B M bar 2 to be the set of all binary vector of length 2 M bar with exactly having weight m bar. And then we can uh, append suitable coordinates to this x single and z single to obtain x hat and uh, z hat that are elements of this set. Okay. Okay, so at the same time we can uh, extend the public matrix hat uh, of px such that we can still uh, preserve the equation. So uh, to summarize this process, so basically uh, the problem of proving that x relative to y had reduced the problem of proving that uh, the knowledge of x hat and z hat belonging to the set b m bar 2 such that equation uh, 2 here holds. Okay. So now we can uh, easily use uh, Stern's permuting technique for, for proving the knowledge of the, uh, the derived vectors. So uh, we can do a random computation of two m bar elements okay so um, we send permutations uh, the this kind of permutation of x hat to the verifier and see that okay so uh, the the permutative vector be also belong to uh, this set b m bar 2 so the verifier should be convinced that the original vector also belong to this set and it's implied that uh, the original vector x uh, have um, inferiority to y okay Okay, so um, after handling the routing relation, so uh, we discussed how to, to handle the, the PF relation. Okay, so, so if, if you look at this uh, equation of the PIF uh, output, so basically we have a routing function uh, at the final stage, but before that we have uh, some kind of 
um, computation that involve the secret uh, base of J and also the K, okay? And uh, the, the, the difficulty here, as I discussed earlier, is that we don't have a public matrix here. Okay, so um, to handle these uh, scenarios, we form a, a segment of, of secret vectors x0 to xl, uh, such that uh, x0 equal to the key, and x, uh, for x, each i from, from 1 to l, xi equal to p of ji times xi minus 1 uh, mod q. And finally, y will be the, the routing right xl. Okay? So uh, uh, now the, we, we can transform the equation xi equal to uh, p of ji times xi minus 1 mod q into an uh, equation with a public matrix. So it's xi equal to the concatenation of b0 and p1 multiplied with uh, vector ti minus 1 mod q, where ti minus 1 is the concatenation of uh, up to a block vector, one of them is, uh, is zero, is the other one is exactly x i minus one. Okay, so um, we can use a similar decomposition and extension technique on the uh, secret vector x i and t i, and we can spread all the air equation by uh, uh, by just one equation mod q, so m one uh, multiply w one equal to u one, where the secret uh, w one fits some pattern. So recall that uh, for the final step, we have the equation uh, y equal to routing of xl, which also use another equation mod pq, where the w2 is uh, here is correlated to w1, in the sense that, okay, so the bits of xl actually appear in both, uh, both uh, system equations. Okay? Um, furthermore, uh, some of our application require that the k is committed. So it also gives a lead to another equation with a different modulus. But uh, the known uh, stern lab rules only address equation with respect to a unit modulus. Actually, um, if we uh, we run, uh, if we have many moduli and we run separate protocol for each moduli, so it's not sufficient because uh, uh, we cannot demonstrate the correlation between the, uh, the secret witnesses. Okay, so uh, to address this, so we uh, uh, put forward a general standard protocol with respect to, uh, to many moduli and where the secret witnesses may uh, simultaneously appear across multiple equations. Okay, so... Um, uh, okay, so let's uh, evaluate the set uh, in the uh, minus one zero to one to the ZD uh, where D is the, um, the sum of ZDI and ZDI just uh, introduced. And let S be a set such that uh, for each element of this set, we can associate with a permutation. Uh, we call them um, gamma phi of the element such that uh, the two uh, condition holds. Uh, but a vector W belongs to this set valid, even if the permutation of this vector also belongs to this set valid. And uh, the second condition is that if uh, W belongs to valid and phi uniform over in S, then the population is uniformly set valid. So uh, with this setting, actually, we uh, we can we can obtain a general standard protocol for the relation where we uh, given matrix M i vector U i. We can prove that we have the vector W belong to set values, which is the concatenation of uh, Z W i. Such that uh, the end, we have n equation modulus, different modulus holds m i uh, times w i equal to u i. So um, this um, this uh, standard protocol, so uh, it usually has uh, it has perfect completeness and so it's at two thirds. Okay. Okay. So uh, do I still have time? <laughs> okay. So uh, so let me go quickly. Okay, so in case there was a um, problem with Karum, so in, 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 uh, in such a system, we have three parties of bank, uh, the user and the merchants, where the user can withdraw a coin from the bank and spend at the merchants. So um, in the online model, so um, the, merchant, uh, the merchant have to contact the bank for each transaction, but uh, in the much more preferable model, uh, the offline model, the merchant can accept payment without interaction with the bank and can deposit the coins at a later point. So, uh, uh, such a system should uh, 
uh, certify several requirements. Anonymity means that the bank cannot inform anything about about uh, the, the, um, the owner of the coin, and the, the, the user cannot spend more coins than what we withdraw. And if he uh, violates this, then, then there will maybe a mechanism to identify uh, double spenders. And uh, finally, honest, honest user cannot be found is accused of being double spenders. Okay, so compact cash uh, is a system where the user can withdraw a wallet of uh, up to the L uh, coins in a way such that uh, the complexity of all of the protocols is, is just proportional in L, not in uh, two to the power L. So, can this account show that uh, to uh, to build a cash system we need uh, three building blocks? A signature with efficient protocol that allows signer to to size uh, of leader sign commit uh, messages and allow the user to uh, to prove knowledge of uh, a certain a uh, very certified uh, certificate. Uh, also, we need a PIF with uh, supporting your knowledge proof that I discussed, and also a double standard uh, identification mechanism. Okay. Um, okay. So to instantiate this. Um, modular uh, construction in the, from lattice assumption so we employ a signature with efficient protocol uh, from a work up in um, good last year that allowed the user to with a public key pay, PKU to run a two-party uh, protocol with a bank and obtain a wallet consisting of um, a top of EU KNT where EU is the secret key correspond to uh, the public key KNT are two uh, secret PIF keys and J is a LP counter in a initialized H0 that indicates uh, how many coins have been spent. Okay, okay so uh, a coin uh, will, will be uh, a tuple uh, of R, Y, S, Y, T, and Pi, where R is uh, transaction specific information, that is a vector in P to the M. Uh, y, S is a serial number with the PF evaluation of. Uh, with respect to the key, uh, the first key, and uh, some uh, some input uh, J. The second, uh, um, sorry, um, uh, YT is uh, informed in this way. PKU plus the um, hash that are the up R multiplied with the PF evaluation with respect to the same input and a different uh, KT. Okay, this is called a security tag where hash that is the um, full rank reference uh, function uh, introduced by uh, 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 Agra Okay, so by uh, non interactive you know, argument of knowledge that YS and YG are uh, valid and uh, correctly computed. It is, um, it is uh, okay, so to do this, so uh, we, uh, we can uh, um, expect all of relation in the uh, uh, and then reduce to an instance of a general protocol that I presented. And then uh, we obtain an interactive argument for the whole statement, and then we can repeat it many times to achieve a principal size error, and then you find something to make it non directed. Okay, so now if the user double spend, then there are two coins with the same serial numbers, but with different transaction info and different uh, security tags. And in this case, we can uh, compute the difference of them, and based on the uh, full range different property of the mapping, to recover the, uh, the PIF value FT, FTJ, and then we can recover the, the bubble key of the user. Okay, so let me conclude the talk. So we obtain zero knowledge argument for two less pay PIF uh, with complexity uh, linear in uh, lambda and uh, also linear in, uh, in L. But uh, we couldn't achieve the same for other PIFs so due to their complicated structure. So this is one of the open problem. And we also obtain a general standard protocol that may be of independent interest. And uh, we have application with a large base compact cash system, but uh, it in fact uh, quite inefficient because the coin upsize a uh, sub power of lambda times L plus lambda square, so with uh, also a large hidden factor within the sub organizations. So uh, we consider the problem of the designing more efficient system, uh, ECAS system from legacy and open interesting problem. Okay, so thank you for your time and your attention. Maybe the we can take a one question when the speaker is yes. Any question or comment? Okay.
Okay, let's thank Koa again.